in a world where Carolina Panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for Panthers news and opinions. Only one podcast roars ferociously. It's the C3 Panthers podcast. And you already know it's perfect, baby. What's going on? I am your leader for today's show, Cody Lashney, here again with another free for all Friday. And listen, man, I told you I was going to do this. I told you I was going to make it a consistent thing for the C3 channel. Um, And I'm a man of my word, man. Listen, I want to talk about a lot of different things that uh, are going on, not only in Panther football, but we can talk a little bit of NFL. We can talk some MMA. There's a huge UFC fight this weekend. I'm pumped about it. I know they don't get a chance to talk about MMA on YouTube. Uh, and I know there are so many Panther fans that are also UFC fans. I figured it'd be a dope time to just talk about it, man. But listen, this show is for you. This is a StreamYard show. Listen, man, if you want to tell me something, come in and tell me. The link is in the stream yard um, or pardon me. It's in the YouTube description, or if you're watching this on Facebook, it's in the Facebook description uh, and I'm going to post it in the YouTube chat once more. So that way you all know how to interact with your boy. Today is very chill. We ain't doing too much, but talking and um, you know, we have a lot of tremendous topics. I want to talk about Cam Newton. I want to talk about Jeremy Chen. But to start this off, I'm going to join my friend and a legend of the cat calls, my friend Mike, aka Supreme Leader. What you doing, bro? Oh, man. You're too kind, my good sir. What's up, brother? Happy you could join me, dude. Yeah, man. Nothing. Just chilling, man. You know, hanging out. Um, That's cool. You're doing this little thing on Friday. Now, I missed it last friday but I'm down that's fine friday. Yeah, that's brother. fine now now you know now you know man we're doing this every friday i wanted to do something to make uh c3 panther nation to feel more and more like a part of the show uh with that said i have to introduce another long time fan of the c3 podcast one of our brothers from up north nick montiero what's going on brother hey what's up guys can you hear me all right yeah man you sound yeah. crisp and clear buddy what's going on Sweet. with you What's up, Supreme? Long time no see. Yeah, man. What's going on, Nick? <laughs> hey, man. I appreciate y'all joining me, dude. Um, I got some uh, some fun things in store that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, like I said, we'll talk some Panthers. But I'm also down to, you know, if you guys have something that's on your mind about the Carolina Panthers or about the NFL or just sports in general, man, it could be anything. We could talk about UFOs if you want to. I don't give a damn. I'm ready to talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. Uh, and real quick, before we go forward, let me shout out some people in the chat room, man. The Real Zero, 10 Tizzy, I see you, bro. Uh, Cephas Williams, Sideshow Bob, always in attendance. Lawrence Trevett. You already know, man. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Guys, once again, I appreciate you uh, joining me. I put the link to the stream yard uh, in the YouTube description if any of you want to come hang. But uh, listen, I wanted to to start with this, unless you guys had something uh, that was on your mind. The NFL released uh, a, a list of the most versatile players in the NFL. And I thought the whole list was surprising, but more so, but because our guy, Jeremy Chin, is the number one ranked player on wow. this list, the most versatile player in the NFL. Mind you, over our very own Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara at number three. So that really got me interested, man. It's like, you know, I know amongst Panther fans, we're loving what Jeremy Chen's doing and what he was able to do for us. But I kind of feel like he's already caught the imagination of the NFL fan base at large. So do you agree with this? Is is he the most versatile player in the NFL? And I'll let whichever one of y'all want to jump in and grab it. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, based off of last year, um, he's – 
definitely. You know, I mean, the man took two fumbles back. That that still is like deep in my mind that he took two fumbles back for a touchdown. And this guy can play. Sure, he can play corner in the slot, play safety, linebacker. Um, there's not many players I can think of that can do that in the NFL, if there are any. Come to think about it. Yeah. He's definitely versatile. My my biggest thing is, so he ranked higher on this list than Christian McCaffrey, mm-hmm. Alvin Kamara, Taysom Hill, Jamal Adams, and Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and again, this is Gil Brandt who's writing this. Uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. But I mean, that's that's considered pretty highly, especially consider considering what. Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara have already done in the NFL. Um, so, yeah, Nick, go ahead, man. I mean, with Jeremy Chin, if we were to take away those two fumble, those two fumble returns from him, he wouldn't be rated at number one. I mean, don't get me wrong; he's a great player, and I love him as a player. But he's also, you know, a rookie. We don't know what he's going to deliver long term. So to, to rate him number one right now, I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves personally. And right. then the other thing I want to look at too is what's the different, what's the drop rate between Christian McCaffrey and some of the best wide receivers in the league? You know, I mm. know, I know Christian has good hands. He hardly ever drops him. And on top of that, the last two seasons, he's had terrible quarterbacks at best. You know, between Kyle Allen, you know, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater wasn't as bad as far as accuracy is concerned in the short game. But in the long game is where he, he, you know, really dropped the ball. I'd love to see where his stats line up receiving-wise compared to some of those guys before I was – before I'd rate him at number two. That's two thoughts personally. No, listen, and it's all of it's legitimate. I mean, again, I don't know if I would – call him yet the most versatile uh, player in the NFL. I found it interesting. They had um, Jamal Adams uh, ranked number five. And I always thought that they had a very similar skill set and that they kind of do the same thing. Like Jamal Adams kind of has those eyes of a linebacker, but plays at the safety position and is aggressive like a linebacker. So I think that's a, you know, that's a good comparison, but again, Jamal has been in the NFL for a bunch. Yep. You know, I don't, I don't know that I would rank him uh, number one. I do think he's on the way to being that, though. Like, I think we all agreed that the sky is the limit for Jeremy Chen. Like, maybe this yeah. is our our very own Troy Palomalu, or at least we're hoping. I'd like to see another year out of him before I put him at number one. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, Maybe. for sure. Both of them yeah. definitely belong to be on the list. It's just one and two. While I love to see it as a Panthers fan, I'd like to see you know the stats behind it as far as how they rank up in all these different positions. You know, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Christian could very well be a good wide receiver. You know, and I I would love to see him transition into that point after we've used him for a couple more years at running back. You know, to keep him long term, but. I'd like to see that drop rate in comparison, you know, because those short passes, they're what they're what's key, especially when you have a terrible quarterback. A hurt quarterback can still a majority of the time do short five yard, ten yard passes, you know, and Christian McCaffrey yeah. seems to get a lot of those. So let's see those drop rates in comparison. I think it is definitely gonna be interesting the numbers that Christian McCaffrey puts up and DJ Moore. Yeah. You know, no, knowing that, you know. In 2018, DJ, DJ was the first read most of the time. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey, he's such a big part of the offense. Like, we're going to force feed him. Whenever he's on the field, that's been the game plan for our offense, force feed Christian McCaffrey. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic changes. Um, but how about that, though? Two Panther players – atop the most versatile players in the NFL list. Like, boy, that's pretty damn good, you know, uh, to wild. get not only one yeah. player on that list, but, you know, to get two of them. Uh, I mean, would you – yeah, go ahead. Your butt, was, oh, there he is right there. Okay, I was going to ask you if uh, Taysom Hill was on the list. So. <laughs> Dude, everybody wants to call him my boy. Look, I just think that he's fast <laughs> for a quarterback – 
and is built like what you want modern day quarterbacks to do. I don't even know if it's going to be Jameis Winston. I think probably not. Um, but and then like that's another thing too. You know, look, I don't want to give no credit to the damn Saints, no. but like, can we can we say that Jeremy Chin has proven to be the level of versatile of Taysom Hill? Who plays like every fucking position on offense and special teams? It's like, you know, I, I think maybe it's a it's a bit premature. Go ahead. If he could have a season similar to what he had last year, not even necessarily quite as you know amazing. Don't get me wrong, I want him to. But if he could have a season similar to last year, then okay, yes, you definitely deserve it to be high up on that list. That season last, the last season was pretty awesome for him. He would. There was not really any bad plays that he was in. Don't get me wrong. He made his rookie mistakes, but there wasn't anything crazy. You know, in comparison to the rest of the defense, he was definitely a superstar. Definitely a superstar. Go ahead. ahead. Putting him on a big hype train right now. Like, I would even put, if he had to, put McCaffrey over him just based off, you know, the history of what he's done so far. So... For them to put him number one, that's that's some mm-hmm. heavy stuff to carry for him. Yeah, I, I think it probably would have been better to put Christian McCaffrey at number one, especially just you know knowing he was the first running back in forever to have a thousand yards rushing and receiving. For those wondering, the entire list is eleven: Cordell Patterson, ten: Isaiah Simmons, who again has to prove his uh, Clemson stock. Tyron Matthew, number nine; Kendon Drake, number eight. Buddha Baker, seven, Travis Kelsey, six, Jamal Adams, five, Taysom Hill, four, and Alvin Kamara, number three. Uh, to me, that whole list is kind of weird. Yeah. Um, you know, I, the, I don't know that I would put uh, one Jeremy Chin as, as high just because, again, but what you guys said, he needs more time to prove it. But then, like, to put him over veterans like Travis Kelsey – Mm-hmm. Like, come on, that dude's like one of the most, you know, dominant tight ends in the game right now. Um, any other uh, players that uh, are on this team that you kind of think might be able to fit that versatile build? I tell you what, I'll give you one that I, I, I feel Joe Brady might want to incorporate. Um, I wonder if we might use Shy Smith, similar to how we use Christian, I mean, uh, Curtis Samuel. Uh, here in, in Charlotte, me motion him out of the backfield, line him up as a receiver. You know, I feel like he might be another player that we're kind of looking to put in a in a versatile spot this year. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I know they wanted Shaq Thompson to have that spot as a versatile, you know, linebacker back there, but that didn't really work out. So, yeah, that really didn't work out at all. <laughs> I mean. Line, uh, you know, Shaq has been a serviceable linebacker, but I feel like they only ever envisioned him to play linebacker. You know? Yeah. Um, it, it's like they, he played a bunch of other things at Washington, but I don't think they ever really had intentions of using him as a safety or a running back even, which a lot of people forget that he played. Um, but – uh. Another thing I wanted to bring up with you guys and um, I felt was a, a good conversation because, uh, you know, really there's not a whole lot of Panther news to talk about. So I figured, whatever, if it's Panther adjacent, you know, it's worthy of being talked about. Uh, and I figured this would get a bunch of different opinions. Uh, and I'm just interested to kind of see what everyone thinks on this. Uh, PFF put put this out on Twitter. Cam Newton is a top blank quarterback. And I like this because to me, this kind of is a good way to kind of see what a lot of people think about Cam now and who he is, not only as a Patriot, but just as a quarterback. Can he reclaim any of that former glory? But also, like, it's a good question because how many quarterbacks – would you rank above Cam Newton right now? Like, how many other players would you rather have as your quarterback other than Cam Newton? So I thought this was a good question. And chat, everyone in the chat, feel free to chime in. Again, the link to the StreamYard is in the description if anybody wants to come in here and bullshit with me. But, uh, 
yeah, Nick, I, I'll start with you, man. Not to just put you on the spot, but do you feel uh, strongly about about this one way or the other? So I hear about Newton all the time being up here in Mass, like all the time. That's all everybody talks about, how they miss Tom Brady, that sort of deal. He had big shoes to fill. So no matter what, it was kind of one of those those deals where he would – I'm not going to say he would never fill Tom Brady's shoes, but you know that there are big shoes to fill, and the likelihood of him filling him, filling him the first year that he's in New England was slim to none. You know, his season last year, given the fact that he had to miss some games due to COVID and the fact that they didn't really have very many weapons on offense, I thought it – wasn't terrible. Don't get me wrong. He had his down games. But if you look at that game in Seattle, especially, that was yeah. an awesome game to watch. You yeah. know, I just, I don't want to write him off as a quarterback. You know, I want to see how he does this season. If he, if he balls out this season, I'd put my faith in Newton, you know, but I mean, we, we didn't do him right when he was down here. He got beat up behind our trashy O line. So then, all right, let's let's put a number to this, because that's why I like the question because okay. it really it really kind of, you know, puts it right out in front. Like, you know, what would you rank him? Cam is a top what quarterback? Would you say top five, top ten, fifteen? I'd what, say what, what are you feeling? I'd say he's definitely within the top fifteen. You know, even even with the season that he had last year, you know, I'd say he's definitely within the top fifteen. I don't think he'd break necessarily into the top 10, you know, it's, but it's, we haven't seen a whole lot of him over the last three years. You know, he's right. dealt with a lot of injuries just these last three years. And the NFL is all about what, what you're doing for me now, you know? So right now I'd say he's at the bottom of the top 15. If he has a good season this year, I'd definitely bump him up easily into the top 10, if not into the top five. Okay. You know? So to you, he could be a little bit higher depending oh, yeah. on just how he performs. Oh yeah. If okay. he bring, if he brings out like the the cam of 2015, you know, even yeah. something remarkably close to that, I definitely say he's within the top 10 easy. Easy. You know. Top. Okay. All right, Mike, man, would do you uh would you put Cam in the top 15 NFL quarterbacks? Top 20, what you thinking, dude? It, it it's just tough based off, you know, the few seasons he's had since what uh 2000 what was that awful Steelers game 2016 uh, 17? 17. 17 yeah it was 2017 yeah. and it's like at first I said easily he's a top 15 quarterback like I could pick 14 other quarterbacks before I pick him but just you know based off of what's happened and like Nick said what what I need to see from him for me, it's like kind of like a fringe top twenty, right now. So uh, a fringe top. So would you rather have somebody like? Would you rather have Ryan Tannehill than than Cam Newton right now? At this at this at this moment in time, I would take Tannehill over Newton. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a, I would. This this is a good one. Okay, so so you would take Cam over over Tannehill, Nick? No, I. I oh yes, I would. I definitely would. Just for one reason alone. A, how Cam rushes. That dude is a bull. Okay. On top of that, his deep ball. Last season, wasn't he like number one whenever it came to the deep ball? And he had no weapons? Yeah, that's kind of, I think, especially early in the season for them, when the passing attack uh, wasn't, uh, you know, when they weren't all injured and everything. I think that was before Edelman. Got injured too, so yeah, I, yeah, I, I think so. so. But uh, that was Tannehill's MO too. Is is throwing deep. all right? Let me do this. How about this? I'll just throw a name at you, and you tell me if you would take Cam or this guy, Cam Newton or Derek Carr. Ooh, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, why I, I, I'm saying I'm saying Cam. Yep. On, on that, okay. Jay Anderson still says top ten. I'll take Cam over 25 quarterbacks right now. Uh, dude, I love that that confidence, man. I still believe that Cam can be that too. Uh, he definitely has the weapons to do it this year. Um, 
All right, I mean, this is kind of easy, but okay. Russell Wilson, would you take Cam or Russell? Russell. Uh, yeah, but I had to take Russell on that one. Okay, Kirk Cousins. Cam. Ooh. Oh, um, my, don't break my heart, man. Dude, don't, don't, don't say Kirk Cousins over Cam, bro. Oh, man. I might have to kick you off, bro. Don't do uh, it to me, dude. That's, that, it's okay. I mean, like, honestly, I, I want the upside of Cam. You want the upside of Cam? Yeah, because I, I feel like he's still got some. He's only 30, what, 31, 32? Something 31, like I think, so, right? I think so, yeah. So I, I want Cam's upside as opposed to bootleg. I think Cam Ryan. Newton's a year older than me. By the way, we were wrong. It was 2018 when uh, we played the Steelers. Uh, but, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, you take Cam over, uh, over Kirk Cousins. All right. You almost gave me a heart attack, bro. <laughs> you almost gave me a heart attack, bro. Um, all right. Uh, what's another another quarterback? Um, oh, I got one. Okay, go ahead. Cam or Sam Darnold? Ah, of course, right? <laughs> how do we not do that? Oh, dude. How dare you? How dare you, man? <laughs> Honestly, I'll take Cam. I'll take Cam. Yeah, I mean, there's no way I could yeah. I could not pick Cam just based on, like, one, we're still hoping to see something from Sam, which, hey, I've said before, I'm optimistic that we can see that. I think, you know, Sam has potential to be good this year. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, knowing what Cam has done, the kind of weapons that we do have here for him now, the kind of offensive coordinator – yeah, man, I'm I'm 100. percent uh, I'm rocking, rocking with Cam. Um, how about Matt Ryan? Um, yeah, Cam. I've, I've seen how fast he runs. I'm taking Cam. <laughs> taking Cam. Yeah, I agree with that too. I, I'm not. Uh, I don't know how you could ever take Matt Ryan. I, I, I'm just. I've never been a big fan of Matt Ryan, dude. Like, nope. I know he has all the numbers. He has all the the stats, but it's like, dude, is he ever going to win you a football game? Like, is Matt Ryan the sole reason that you win? Or is it because a whole bunch of other shit goes right for Matt Ryan in that offense? You know, like, I don't know. I To me, he's not, he's not going to make or break the game for you. No, definitely not. No, and that, that Super Bowl back in what, 2016? It was like 2016 or 2017. Where they lost to the Pats, sixteen. Yeah, that, yeah, that was awesome. Twenty-eight, three. Poor little out. <laughs> yeah, it's, for it those just sucks because you know Ryan, he had all the weapons available and they couldn't find a way to get it done. It just so yeah. So it just yeah, shows I, that he's not going to win it for you. Definitely not going to win it for you. Uh, is there any like? Uh, would you take? Uh, how about Baker Mayfield? Do you take a Baker Mayfield over Cam? I haven't seen like Yeah, I haven't seen enough of them. I've at this point I take Cam because Baker, he doesn't really show anything special yet. Yet. Okay. Like, there's not one thing you can say he does this great. He's more like, you know, jack of all trades. Jack Walter, okay. But you take uh so this how about Kyler Murray? I feel like Kyler Murray has a lot of potential, but he's another one of those guys that people are kind of waiting for him to turn it on and like be the number one overall pick. Would you take Cam or Kyler? Mighty Mouse. I'm not I'm not a Mighty <laughs> Mouse fan. <laughs> Bro, I call him Sonic the Hedgehog. Dude, dude. <laughs> I, I like Kyler. That that yeah. team is actually my one of my dark horse teams. You know. Yeah, always, it's hard to not like the Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the whole yeah. division, dude. The, the NFC West division, just in general, is just stacked. I feel. Oh, I'm glad we don't play in that division anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Super happy we don't. Uh, Oh, uh, this is a good one. Uh, ask Tim Tizzy, Dak or Cam? Dak Prescott or Cam Newton? 
Mm. Uh, I'd take Cam. I'm I'm not a fan of Dak. <laughs> See, I'm not I'm not really a fan of Dak. I, I'm not I'm not a hater of him. No. To be you know like I I would take him above someone like Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't I don't even think I could take Dak over over Cam. I'm I might. I would have to watch his tape from last season a little more, but I know that he was leading the league in passing yards for yes, yes. a couple seasons even or a couple of games even after he was taken out. You know, and to be leading the league that far even after a couple games you're still ahead, that's kind of impressive. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. give him that, but only based off of last season, not anything before that. You know, and I mean, how many injuries yeah. has he had compared to Cam over the last couple seasons? So I know we had the the big one last uh, last season where he damn near yeah. had his ankle separated from the rest of his leg, um, and then I, he hasn't been too injury prone before that, has he? I don't know. So. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think so either, man. I mean, especially now, if we're talking Cam Newton of today. And the Dak Prescott of today coming off that injury, I'd probably still, you know, I'm still picking Cam Newton too. Cause we don't even know uh what Dak is gonna be this year. That's that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh so what about this is the one that got Twitter talking the other day. Would you take Cam Newton over Lamar Jackson or would you take Lamar? Oh, I like Lamar. Um, he hasn't taken him over the top yet, but I, at this point, yeah, I take Lamar over Cam. Probably Lamar. Can't but really be, be too close. mad at that. Yeah. So what? What, ma- what makes it close? I mean, they're both um, they're both running quarterbacks. You know, they both offer the same kind of skill. You know, and they're both equally as hard to defend against. But it seems like Lamar runs more than Cam does, you know, and I feel like he's going to be going down the same road that Cam did where after about five, six years, that's when it's all going to start catching up to him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the running style, too, is just like one's going through you and the other one's going to make you miss. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, one's going to juke you out of your shoes and the other one's going to stiff arm you out of your shoes. So I think, uh, again, you know, I would say that Cam Newton's body is built for more punishment, and it is. Let, let's let's keep it a buck. Before Cam Newton started getting hurt all the time in this, you know, most recent years, Cam Newton was known for being super Cam. I mean, he never got hurt. The dude flipped over his truck and still played a game the next week. <laughs> you know, the, so it's like, uh, I, I'm not, you know, it's easy to think it's Cam Newton is injury prone now, but, you know, I think a lot of people would still say that Lamar, people want him to bulk up more because they're still worried that, you know, someone with his frame and his build uh, running as much as he does might still end up getting getting pretty hurt like, uh, uh, like RJ3 did all those years ago now. <laughs> Yeah, he just he needs his uh he needs some help. I know he got one or two receivers this year, but I mean, if there's nobody getting open, you know, what else you gonna do? Boy, really? Uh, are there any of the other young players like uh? Would you take any of the rookies in this year's class over uh over Cam Newton this year? Trey Lance, maybe. Trey Lance? Okay, you're muted, uh, Mike. I don't know if you know. Oh, I said most definitely, my bad. Um, Yeah, Trey Lance. Uh, any really of the top, uh, I'd say two of the top three. I'd take Lawrence or Trey Lance. I noticed you didn't add, uh, y'all didn't say Zach Wilson. Y'all wouldn't, yeah, would y'all have, would y'all prefer Zach Wilson or Cam? No, we play them first game this season, man. I can't say anything about that guy you mentioned because he's going to suck. 
That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you guys saying that the reports coming out of their training camp was that he, like, dropped or I. Uh, he threw like quite a few bad throws. Yeah, apparently, there. apparently he had thrown like two pick sixes, Oof. and uh, he had been looking really inaccurate uh, out there on the field. Again, like it's early and it's all rumors and it's just training camp, so it's like it don't really mean shit. At least not right now. But you know, it, it'd be funny if that was true that the Jets spend the number two pick in the draft on this guy who came out of nowhere and is not even as good as the guy that he sent away. That's why game one of the season for us is so interesting, that uh, that Jets-Panthers matchup. It's like you're going to have Sam Darnold against his old team and the guy that they drafted to replace him with. It's like what's more on the line than that, you know? I'm going to be watching that game with my cousin, too, and, she, and uh, her and her husband are Jets fans. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That ought to be fun. It's always fun watching it with, like, family or friends that are fans of another team. Like, uh, I've said this before. My brother is a huge Saints fan. So, you know, whenever they play, we're always talking a bunch of shit to one another. Uh yeah, it makes it more fun. I'm pumped for this season, dude. I'm definitely pumped about it more than others. Um, yeah, Nervosh, man, this is the Friday free-for-all stream, man. If you want to come in and hang out, I posted the link to the stream yard. Uh, this is kind of just meant to be a hangout show, man. Hey, you Charlie. guys, yeah, yeah. what's going on, man? How are we doing on those likes? Those likes? What you mean? Those likes. How many likes we got? Oh the oh likes, bro! I didn't even know. What to, yeah, man, uh, we got ten likes right now, man. Which what? isn't bad. Which isn't bad. I can't even. Uh, I can't even argue. We got twelve people in right now. Oh, uh, which is hey, which is which is good, man. Like I said, I'm I'm still getting people used to the idea of this Friday show just being like a different thing that we do other than the podcast and hang out and talk about. A little bit of everything, man. We can talk about Panthers uh, and just NFL news in general, man. We can talk about just anything football. I've also, and I promised Tim Tizzy we'd talk about it at some point. Um, I'm a big time UFC fan, uh, and there's a there's a big pay per view uh, going on this weekend with Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. Mm. Uh, the, the official weigh-ins are going on right now, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on that, too, uh, as we're talking. But, yeah, man, this is just a show to BS with y'all, man. Talk about anything, man. If y'all had something on your mind about the Panthers roster that y'all wanted to talk about or position battles or just anything, man, y'all can say Sam Donald's going to suck if that's what y'all think, you know? Just uh, whatever y'all feel, man. I'm excited for Sam, dude. Like, I, I want to see what he brings to the table. You know, my hopes are high, but I also understand that, you know, it could very easily turn out to be not what I want it to be. You know, but I think I think he's going to turn it on this season. But I think it's going to be a little bit later. I think it's probably going to be right around game game six is where we really see Sam come into his shoes. I don't think it's going to be right away. I mean, I'd like to say that it's right away, but it's going to take a minute for him to get used to us. At least that's what I think. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a, a feel-out period. Right. And that's one of the things that I just want Panther fans to, like, uh, you know, just I guess to kind of hold back on. Because I feel like, especially early on, dude, Sam's going to make a bunch of boneheaded mistakes, dude. Like, it's inevitable. It's gonna. It's you know, his first time in a brand new offense. You know, I think it would blow our expectations away if he just comes out and throws for five hundred yards and four touchdowns. Like that's the dream scenario. But yeah, he's gonna mess up. And I feel like there's a contingent of Panther fans that are just waiting for this dude to fail. You know, and I understand. It. You know, we're kind of jaded, especially after Teddy Bridgewater, but. I, I don't know. I just want everyone to, to give him a chance. And uh, we got to remember that we got a lot of new guys learning new systems and, you know, figuring out Panther football. I'd love to see how he does under pressure, too, because that's when 
he made, I mean, that's when anyone's going to make the most mistakes, but I'd love to see how he does, you know, whether or not he throw he goes for the pass, whether or not he tries to make the run, what those situations are, you know, if he tries to go for the pass and it, I wouldn't be upset if he misses, if he misses the, his receiver, as long as if it wasn't intercepted, you know, that, yeah. was his, that was his big thing in New York, you know, seeing ghosts and then throwing balls that were off and then them getting picked off. I mean, it's going to be an issue with any quarterback, but if he can maintain himself under pressure, I'm okay with it. That and go for a pass, a real pass. You know, do the things that we hated. Do the things that we hated Teddy Broad, Bridgewater for not doing. So, well, that kind of part of that was throwing the ball deep, though, right? And couldn't you make the argument? Yeah, couldn't we make the argument that the more you throw the ball deep, the greater the chance you have of potentially throwing those interceptions? This so, like true. again, like that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like we we kind of. As fans, we want our cake and eat it too, right? Like we want to be able to have this downfield passing attack. Well, that inevitably inevitably means there's going to be some boneheaded interceptions. Yeah, and and I think that him uh, and DJ and uh, and Terrace Marshall and Robbie Anderson they're going to have to work through that, especially early in the season and when they're still getting on on the same page. Uh, Mike, I haven't really heard from you, man. Like, are you optimistic about Sam? Like. What are you thinking about this season going forward for us, bro? Um, I'm pessimistic about my uh, internet service, for one. But, <laughs> I, I um, hear that. I see <laughs> that. <laughs> um, I'm optimistic. Um, well, just oh. me being a you know <laughs> what Panthers fan since what uh, Jake Delone came in. Um, it's I, I got to be up about Darnold, but I can be realistic in the fact that it's going to be their first year together. You know, it's going to be his first year in Joe Brady's offense. Um, yeah, I mean, he can at least replicate what Bridgewater did, which was basically nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you know what, fifteen touchdowns was a uh, was a career high for him or whatever it was. So I mean, just embarrassing, dude. Embarrassing. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. He, I think we. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just I'm I'm thinking he can uh really help light up this offense for us, especially with the new pieces we have back, or old pieces we have back. McCaffrey, new pieces we have in. Um, if he can't get it done in these next two years, then yeah, yeah. at least we ain't got to deal with him too terribly long. QT zero, what's going on, bro? Was in and was in it, man. Oh, oh snap. I'm over here. I'm over here. Jeff. Chilling, bro. I'm going to say I got a couple minutes to say what's up. You know what I mean? I'm going to be over here wiggling into my other job. I just come, you know, you had to show what's up. Show my face real quick. I like, like it, bro. It. I appreciate you. I appreciate you stopping in, man. Uh, you know, man, yeah, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're kind of talking uh, about a little bit of everything, man. We talked about. Uh, Cam Newton a little bit, where you would rank him. Is he a top 15 quarterback? Um, no, he ain't. No, he ain't. I got to say. Uh, no, come no, on, bro. No, uh, why not? not. Tell, tell, me why, tell me why not. Tell me why not. Because that boy can't even fucking throw over. Come on. He's going to have all these weapons. And I promise you right now we're going to skunk that motherfucker week nine, bro. All right, thing. You know what I'm saying? Get with you against this, bro. <laughs> all right, but so what? Like, so what? You you don't think that Cam, with all those you know receivers that they signed, you know, you don't think they Cam can make a, nothing of that? One, they signed one receiver and two tight ends. All right, they signed one receiver and two tight ends. They they figure out oh this boy can he got yeah. Ghost in his best friend. Let's try to get this motherfucker two of them. And but he he five years past his motherfucking expiration date. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Like this mother, he, he he can't he throw deep no more. That's not his. He's not his play. He's not a. He's not a passing quarterback anymore. Like, like literally, look at this motherfucker. He had more rushing touchdowns than passing, right? Bro, but you have to admit though, that offense outside of Cam Newton was ass, bro. Like I'm talking a hundred percent ass, dude. Teddy, 
Teddy Bridgewater had more passing touchdowns. Yeah, but with <laughs> DJ Moore, <laughs> bro, with, D, with DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel and Robbie Anderson, like, I, I, I think Cam Newton would have had more than 15 touchdowns uh, if he was our quarterback. Oh, yeah. I think most of them. Most of them. Most of them. They would have been deep. They would have been deep passes, and that's what I'm really interested in. with having Sam Darnold over here with that new young blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm really, I'm really interested in seeing what they go do with deep passing, especially with Joe Brady as our fucking coordinator and how he did shit with Joe Burrow. I'm really interested to see how this is gonna work, and especially, honestly, you know that situation. I feel like we're still gonna be more run heavy, run first type of team. Yeah, and it's gonna be a more it's gonna it's gonna be more of an entrapment type uh, you know situation. Oh oh, run the ball, run the ball. Okay, we got hit a play action for a deep ball to Robbie. Run ball, run ball. Okay, play action with DJ Moore at the slot, fucking doing a crossing route. You know, run ball. You know, screen play. You feel me? Like it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be hectic. I don't know how motherfuckers gonna be able to guard us. Dude, uh, like I mean, you you said a lot of what I've been thinking, man. Like. You know, we're, we're still going to do a lot of the underneath stuff, a lot of the screen passes. We're going to have to run the football. I, I mean, I'll, I'm interested to see the, the split that uh, we see in reps between McCaffrey and Hubbard, you know, when, when we try and run the football. Like, are we just going to do the same shit where we just force feed Christian McCaffrey on 97% of the plays? We really need to, honestly. If we go, if we go have a successful run game, we we most likely are gonna have to. But we're gonna get this man killed. We're gonna get. The, he didn't even last all the last season. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think there's some silver lining between the lines that nobody's really tripped off about the whole situation with McCaffrey being out. Because you didn't realize, uh, Action Jackson's ass got that pulled out fucking plenty of times. He, or, he did not get put, pulled out plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? But uh, when it comes to CMC with a little ankle or a little shoulder thing, they pull that motherfucker out. I feel like I feel like last year turned lightweight into a wash. You know what I mean? And and like you know they they made sure that oh we got, we gonna need Christian McCaffrey for the years to come. Let's make sure homie's good. When it came to Action Jackson, put that motherfucker back in. You know what I mean? Like there's some people don't really trip and all like we. We, we realized we're not making the playoffs last year when it became that, oh, we need eight wins and we got nine games left. Oh, it's a wash. Let's take Christian McCaffrey out because we don't need him this next season. And what does he do? He's the most conditioned motherfucking player in the league. Fuck a running back. He's the most conditioned player in the league. You know what I mean? Like, we need to be forced to beat him. If we want to have a successful game, we're going to have to do that. 100%. My thing is this, though. Like, yeah, so Action Jackson, he's not as important to he's our team. Important. I mean, he's very, I'm, not, listen, I'm not saying that he's not important. I'm not saying he's not important. I'm Especially saying our entire year, offense. Yeah, Troy Pride out there fucking. Troy Pride almost hey, but bro, our, our entire there. offense, our entire offense for the past two years in a row has been damn near dependent upon Christian McCaffrey in the passing attack and the running attack. So it's like, if he's going to be that important of a piece of your offense, you got to know how to conserve him a little bit, man. If we're running him that much, dude, he's going to continue to get banged up and be another injury-prone running back, and we're not even going to have him if Sam does turn out to be worth the damn. It's got to be at least 80-20, right? I mean, if anything, 80-20 split. 80%, 20% Hubbard. It's, I mean, you like, you know, you hate his contract, Cody, and but at the same time, if we're paying him all that money, you know, he's, you gotta get what you earn, paid for. He should earn it. <laughs> I mean, that, I gotta, that is, that is a good point. I got a fucking job over here, man. I gotta go get this paper. I'm still gonna be listening, to y'all. What's up, Supreme Leader? What's up, Nick? What up, Cody. Hey, bro, I, I appreciate you jumping in, man. Hey, make that paper, yeah. bro. Yeah, make that I paper. And, uh, hey, day. I'm going to be doing this every Friday, man. So look forward Hell to yeah. it. Whenever y'all want to come in and bull bullshit and hang out, man, hey, this is the place Hell to do yeah. it, man. 
I appreciate you coming, bro. Hey, I'm about to start my own little thing too, bro. Uh, I'm, about, I'm about to get some little shit going. Some little shit like uh, some. I probably go out like keep pounding west or something because I'm out here on the west coast. You feel me? So, <laughs> All right. We gonna have to. We got this shit poppy for me, so I'm gonna need you to hop on with me whenever I get that shit going. And uh, and then also too, if you fuck with some Madden, so you gonna have to see me, bro. Cause I know you'll be playing your games and shit. You know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> hey, bro. Look, whenever you make some shit, let me know, man. The rising it's tide good. lifts all boats, brother. So I'll, I'll oh, pump yeah. the shit out whenever you make it, bro. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I get yeah, to, man. Like, I'm all gonna right. Let me know. All right, yeah, I I appreciate you, cute. Shout out QC Zero. Man, came in with the fire against Cam, bro. Hot Damn. fire. Against my man Cam. Damn. He didn't have to do Cam like that, bro. No, no. I mean, listen, I'm to the point, man. I've been fighting Cam Newton arguments for so damn long, bro. It's like, I ain't got the energy to do it no more, bro. It's like, especially now that he's not on the Panthers anymore. It's like, as much as I love Cam... Bro, it's it's not my fight no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. if people want to shit on him and say he's inaccurate, bro, like, if you ain't been paying attention this damn long, then I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, he's always having to elevate the talent around him, uh, always having to overcome terrible offensive lines. So, I don't know, bro. I, I'm 100% okay with me and Cam Newton stand, defender, capping for him all the time. I don't give a damn, bro. Yeah, I mean, you you guys talked about it. Like, look what he did in 2015. Look who he had to work with. I think that's what people are so afraid of right now is, you know, can Sam Darnold, you know, do something to that level? And we don't know if he can. So it's a little scary right now in Panther land. So I'm looking at some stats right now and comparing the two seasons between – 2019 and 2020, Teddy Bridgewater and Sam Darnold. And did Sam miss quite a few games the last season? Yeah, he's missed some time with injuries. Okay. Um, and then yeah. uh, I think the year before, either his rookie season or the year before, uh, he uh, got mono. Yeah. Remember? Okay. Disease. We're like, yeah, right. <laughs> I knew that, like, dude, I heard that shit when I was a little kid, like, getting monos and kissing dudes. I'm like, what? Who gets that shit, dude? So, <laughs> Who so gets the funny mono? So the thing is, is they started almost the same amount of games. Teddy Bridgewater started 24 games, and Sam started 25. So their stats, you can actually line them up side by side. And when you do, um, Sam took quite a few more attempts at the pass. Than Teddy Bridgewater, you know, t- Teddy was 688 passes, and Sam was 805. So I mean, there's a solid 125 passes difference over the course of two seasons. Yeah, and that's it's not a lot, but when you look at the games, it's it adds up. And on top of that, um, their completion percentages. I mean. They're off by about ten percent, almost ten percent. But yeah, I mean, look at the weapons that they had. You know, Sam had Robbie Anderson for one year, but who else did they? Ha- who else do they have up in New York? Yeah. Also, uh, that that uh, that completion percentage for Teddy just doesn't impress me. No, because we all know how it came. Yeah. Dinking and dunking over the middle, not taking chances. Not being aggressive, and yeah, he had a great completion percentage, but it equaled 15 touchdowns and almost nothing in the red zone. Yeah. So, you know, it, again, like we want Sam to take some chances, yeah, like, you know, and that that means it's not always going to go well, but you know, that's why I think with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson being so shifty and fast, like they should be able to make life. Uh, a lot easier for him. And if you have Christian McCaffrey and Shia Smith uh, on that second or first level, uh, I mean, dude, we might have everything that we need to have a really high powered offense. Yeah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely more optimistic with Sam than Teddy by far. 
you know, especially after looking at these stats right here. It's, I mean, I got to, I got to knock Sam only for the Jets aspect of it, but at the same time, that kind of brings him up in my head, you know, knowing that everything about that team was absolute trash and he didn't have any of the help he needed. Whereas Teddy minus the O line had everything that you could want as a quarterback, you know? So yeah. And he had that on the Saints too. And the Saints, he was actually in a better position. Their, cause yeah. their whole line, it, it's significantly better than ours. Plus they have all their weapons. Saints always bring it every year while lacking a quarterback. Yeah, dude, Sean Payton and the Saints tricked half of the Panther fan base and the Panthers team into believing in Teddy Bridgewater's bullshit, man. It's just yeah, – that's a me. tough one, man. Yeah, he didn't no. fool me. <laughs> no, he didn't fool me either, man. I'm on record having him not fool me. I, yeah. I told everyone on the podcast that – that I wasn't feeling Teddy Bridgewater just because he never demonstrated that kind of ceiling from Louisville to his time with Minnesota and, and the, the whole Saints thing. Like, I knew that was a roster deal with Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas and the offensive line, like the, you know, Sean Payton as his play caller, like all that stuff matters. It really matters. So, I'm just so happy to not have to deal with that dude anymore, man. Like, I'm 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 happy that we're past the Teddy Bridgewater era. But um, I, think, I think the other thing that's gonna make make a big difference with Sam over Teddy is how he reacts to the media and his ownership of his mistakes. You know, yeah. we hated on Teddy for not owning his shortcomings. If Sam, you know, if he's as much as we all know, he's probably not going to be. If he's up front and honest, hey, I dropped the ball here or I, I messed up here or whatever, okay, it is what it is. Jack, lesson learned, move on. But with Teddy, it was always, oh, well, you know, I wanted to run it here and we didn't run it. So that's why we failed. Yeah. It's like, dude, no, you can't pass the ball. That's why we failed. Yeah, yeah. They, they talked about Cam being the diva. Teddy – <laughs> Way more of a diva than Cam ever was. Oh, you right. mean Tedisha? Tedisha, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Tedisha, oh. bro. Oh. Say say the name right, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> bro, we got we gotta use the correct gender pronouns and everything, man. We don't we don't wanna we don't we don't wanna uh, upset Tedisha, y'all. Tedisha, I'm sorry. That's my bad. I'm very sorry. Hey, that that's very big of you to apologize, bro. That's, Thank you. that's what's Thank up. You. That's what's up. Very polite, very gentlemanly thing for you to do. But Tedisha is not our problem anymore. Uh, thank God. And, and again, it's like, look, what are the chances that Sam is worse? Like, one to none. Yeah, it's hard to be worse than than 15 touchdowns. Sideshow Rob said, you know he's listening right now. Bro, I hope so. Hey, uh, Teddy, if you are listening right now, you can come and join us and talk trash. I, I, I left the link to the stream yard if you wanted to come and say something to us. So, uh, hey, by all means, man. But Teddy, can you imagine? You yourself. Come on, let's go. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine if... Teddy Bridgewater joined this show one random night. Oh, dear that Lord. would be the. <laughs> I would, would have to stay consistent, everybody. huh? He'd block everybody. <laughs> right, he would. He would block absolutely everybody. He'd go into the chat. Up, oh, report this. Report this. <laughs> yeah, report he's reporting this. everybody. He's reporting the whole channel, trying to get us kicked off of YouTube and shit. <laughs> he probably would. I wouldn't doubt it, man. I wouldn't doubt it. He seems very uh, in his emotions about a lot of different things. How about this? Do y'all think he does anything with the Broncos? I mean, I feel like I already know the answer, but, like, does uh, does Teddy Bridgewater beat out Drew Locke for the starting job? For the first two games. That's it. It's possible. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like, like Nick said, I feel like it's a – Mm, okay, 
Let's start Drew Lock, and then oh, it's not working. Let's bring Teddy in. Oh, this is even worse. Bring Drew Lock back in, and it's. I, I feel like my play out like that, maybe. Yep. <clears throat> kind of so basically similar, like dude, him, Tyrod Taylor. It's like it's like that stopgap quarterback, right? The the guy that you only expect to play two games, maybe three. You know. Yeah. Especially if y'all believe the rumors that Aaron Rodgers is trying to go to Denver too, like then it's just another big uh, glorified fran- uh, fake franchise backup, you know. I think I think Aaron stays at least this year. I think he's. You think so? Do you think he'll be in Green Bay this year? If that's his contract. I mean, <laughs> it, I mean, it's. That's tough though for him to go to what like back to back NFC championships and you know it all get flubbed up in the end. That he should have way more Super Bowls than he has right now, honestly. Yeah, I agree. Have way more Super Bowls than he has. I mean, you know, it's certainly not. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound crazy. I'm just, you know. I don't know, man. I'm thinking about this team, and it's like, uh, bro, I'm getting some crazy audio interference. Hang on one sec, bro. No, that that was probably me. My bad. No, I'm still getting it. It's on one of my tabs. I, sometimes I'll leave a tab open, and some random ass music is playing, dude. Anyway, my bad. Um. Yeah, I wanted to to ask you guys this. I know I asked you this a little bit before, uh, before the show. Uh, Nick, did uh, uh, Mike? Are you a fan of MMA at all? Are you a UFC fan? You ever watch um, MMA or the UFC? I've I've watched it. Um, it, it was usually at a hotel or a bar or something because I can't pay for it. I I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I love it though. I love it. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Greg Hardy is uh, is fighting on the card uh, this weekend. Uh, he's been he's been doing the UFC thing for a while now. Uh, shout out, too. dude! He's he's been winning. Um, look, I'll go ahead and uh, and throw this up. I brought up uh, UFC dot com. Uh, UFC dot com to do some really good uh, breakdown. Break down to like the numbers and uh, like their record and stuff. And dude, when you look at what Greg Hardy has been able to do, man, he's moving up the ranks. Um, I think early in his UFC career, uh, he legit looked terrible, like he never had any cardio. But now he's uh, training with a legitimate, uh, a legitimate team, American top team, and. Uh, I don't know, man. I just always thought that was a, a, such an interesting story about Greg Hardy. We all know what happened to him here in Carolina, obviously, and why he's not playing uh, football anymore. But then to see him try and make a comeback as a UFC fighter, uh, it, it's just weird. It's like a weird connecting of worlds uh, between fighting and football. Um, ha- have you have uh, either of you seen Greg Hardy fight yet? I saw one, one, and it was a while. It was like maybe two or three years ago, I think, if that, not even that much. But he's all right. I mean, it, he's in the right sport now, you know, for his quote unquote violent nature. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I'm, I mean, I, I, you know, uh, I don't, uh, have you ever seen him fight Nick? Nah, man, I'd, I'd love to watch UFC, but I never get the chance to. Um, but just looking at the stats real quick at the top of the screen, my money is on the other guy. You know, the other guy, he's he's shorter, so it's a smaller target. You know, he weighs about the same, so my money is on that. You know, because he at least has the punch behind it. It really depends on if Greg can keep him spaced out from him. You know, if, if Greg can keep that space between him, use his reach to his inv- advantage, you know, okay, yeah, but I think the other guys just gonna kind of come up from underneath them and surprise them. 
I mean, the thing about heavyweights, they all hit really freaking hard, dude. Like, oh, yeah. it's really it's a, just a matter of uh, of who lands first, you know. Um, yeah. Look, Ten Tins is in the chat room. He's the only guy I know that like really follows the UFC. Ten, you should come and hang out, bro. You don't even have to be on camera, dude. Just come, come, come and bullshit. Bro. I said what? Come to tell, come on through, Tim. That's what I'm saying, man. That, that that's what, what the whole point of this is, just for people to come BS. But yeah, um, it's only for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, this. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't think that Greg Hardy. So for those of you who don't know, I've been following MMA since I was 15. Like I love the sport. I can do breakdowns of that just as easily as I could uh, like football stuff. I love breaking down film and shit like that. And I don't know if uh, if Greg has like top tier talent, like UFC talent. Like I don't know if he's ever going to make it to like the height of the sport, but he's definitely good for some knockouts. And you know that's going to be what he gets uh, gets paid to do. Um, so you know, again, like uh, I'm, I'm happy to see your buddy's able to do with it. I don't ever believe in you know uh, continuing to hold someone guilty over shit that happened in the past, man. Like the past is the past. He deserves his shot at redemption. So you know, power to him. So did the uh, did the Connor fight happen already, or is that on this card? No, that's that's this week. That's the main event. Okay, uh, between so, uh, Conor McGregor and uh, and Dustin Poirier, yeah, that's yeah. this weekend. So I mean, I thought he was retired. What what's going on with that? <laughs> oh, but McGregor, no. So Conor McGregor, like this is kind of what I've been feeling, and it's why I've been wanting to talk about it. Um, you know, Conor, he's known for the trash talk, the bravado, yeah. the big game, and all that. But like now that people have seen him lose a couple times. I've seen Nate Diaz strangle him. I've seen Khabib Nurmagomedov ground and pound him and put elbows in him. Uh, and then I saw Dustin Poirier uh, this past uh, fight not calling her out. It wasn't a complete knockout. It was a TKO, but still, man, like, uh, you know, now he's trying to go back to this tough guy bullshit and talking all kind of trash to Dustin Poirier, talking about his wife and shit. And it's like, it doesn't, that doesn't do nothing for me anymore. Like, I, you know, it, it doesn't... When you're on top of the world and you're undefeated, fine, talk all the shit you want to. But the minute that you start losing, it's like, dude, it, all that trash talk, you have to go out there and prove it. I mean, you're supposed to be the biggest name in the sport, and, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to see you prove it. Hey, look, my man Ten uh, called me on my bluff. Ten, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, What's man, up? loud and clear, bro. Good, good. How y'all doing, C three fan? Dude, the one big time chilling, bro. Big time chilling, man. man. That's what's up. We're ready to talk some MMA. What's what's good, Cody? Dude, hey man, I'm uh I'm trying to I'm trying to hear what you got to say, dude. I'm like, so one, uh, I'll stay on Connor. Like, listen, I love Connor. I think that when Connor McGregor is winning the sport is the most fun that it can be, right? Uh, 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 a Conor McGregor that's kicking ass means that the UFC is kicking ass. So I want him to do well, but at the same time, dude, I'm not down with the trash talking shit anymore. It's like it, it, it's old now. It doesn't have the same hit that it used to now that I've seen him lose to Nate Diaz. Khabib fucking destroyed him. And then, yeah, and, and the Dustin Poirier knocked him out. So, it, you know, it's like I'm not trying to hear this, or uh, you know, talking about Dustin Poirier's wife and oh, I'm gonna leave you on a stretcher. It's like, dude, that shit's played out to me, bro. You can't talk shit when you be getting knocked the fuck out and choked out. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. So that so who are you picking in this fight, dude? Oh, Dustin all day, man. He's more active. You know what I mean? He just knocked him out not too long ago, and Dustin looked like he had a good game playing for him. He kept chopping at the leg because Connor leaves that leg out there like a dum dum, and fucking you know what I mean. Dustin just pieced that leg up, took Connor's power away, and then just clipped him. 
Yeah. So have you heard the uh, excuses that Connor's making now? He's trying to say, oh, he was preparing for Floyd Mayweather. Or no, not Floyd, uh, Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> that he was he was going to box Manny Pacquiao, and then he was doing most of his training camp preparing for a boxer, and then they switched it up on him, and then they gave him the Dustin fight. So he's trying to say that he wasn't even prepared to fight a UFC fight. It's like, right. bro, how is that anyone else's fault other than your stupid ass? It's not even that, man. It, he he. The message is with Dana, man. He was trying to get a fight the entire time, and Dana gave him Dustin because Connor thought he was going to run through him, and Dustin was like, nah, bro, I ain't playing them games. <laughs> yeah, and dude, like, if y'all here listen to me for any length of time, like, I got a lot of family from New Orleans, from Louisiana. <sighs> So it's like the fact that he's also the Louisiana dude. It's kind of like I feel like I'm, like I'm, uh, you know, like I'm almost obligated to pull for Dustin here. You know, the American who's kind of from <laughs> part of my family's neck of the woods and shit. You know, it's like I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm a fan of Dustin. I've been following him for a long time before he was even in the UFC. Yeah, man, and he, if you look at his career, man, he's progressively gotten better and better and better. I mean, he went toe to toe with Gaethje, and Gaethje hit hard as hell. You know what I mean? So oh, each yeah. fight he's each fight he's had, he's progressed at every level of his game. You know what I mean? Stand up on on the ground. He said, "Yeah, he almost beat Khabib." Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Connor and Dustin landed some good shots on Khabib, and then. Khabib does his Khabib thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but they but they were over. You know, I mean, they were overseas in the fight island or whatever, they, whatever it was, and they said it was like 160 degrees in there. They were sweating in before they even got in the ring. I mean, he had him. He had him hemmed up, and he could have tapped him, but he slid right out. It was the only time I ever seen Khabib get nervous. Like he started jerking hard as hell when when Dustin was uh, cinching in. Yeah, uh, I mean, dude, Dustin like. He's one of those guys that if you if you like if you don't follow MMA, like Dustin's the guy that just got a knockout over Connor, so that's probably why you know him. But I mean, Dustin has a win over some who's who competitors. Dude, Max Holloway, he fought Khabib. Uh, I mean, dude, he's beaten a ton of really good fighters before, so it's not like some fluke Gaethje. knockout. Yeah, Justin Gaethje. Uh, uh, um, Dude, I'm blanking on a bunch of names right now. I but know. I think he fought Ferguson too. You know what I mean? Like he he's fought the best of the best. There's a reason why he's in the top ten. You know what I mean? He's top five for sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. And yeah, I didn't get to talk to you about uh, uh, former Panther extraordinaire Greg Hardy. Uh, oh yeah, fighting. Team Hardy, baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what what you think about uh, uh about Greg? He's fighting uh, tied to Ivasa. Um, well. The one thing I'll say about Greg is, is like, you know, he gassed out real early because he thought he was still in football shape the first couple of fights he had, but he realized that he went to a good team. You know what I mean? He's progressed all of his last fights except for like, you know, the uh, the TK, uh, the um, uh, the the disqualification for the knee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and then you remember uh, he won one of his fights. Uh, he has one no contest. He used an inhaler in between rounds, mm -hmm. and you're not allowed to do that shit. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, I, I, he won that fight too, but they overturned it. Yeah, for sure. But the the thing is, you gotta look at it like this, though. Yeah, you know I mean, he jumped in. He jumped in late, but he is a professional athlete. He, regardless of how you feel about the man, whatever, he is a professional athlete, and he played at the highest level. I mean, his his. I forget how many sacks he had with us the one year. It was insane. You know what I mean? I don't know if that was just Coke Rage getting off the ball, playing like Michael Irvin <laughs> from the nineties, but you know what I mean? Like he he did well. And if you look at his, you know, his MMA career, you know what I mean? He's progressed better and better. Yeah. I feel like if he gets his gas tank up, you know, I I could see him breaking into like the top ten. Do I ever think he'll beat anybody like Francis Ngano? Absolutely not. I don't think he'll ever hold that belt. And now that John went that John Jones went the heavyweight, nah, bro, you're not. Mm -mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't see him ever competing at at the top end of the division. Yeah, I don't see him ever fucking with Francis or Stipe uh, or, or Derek Lewis. Like, not, none of those guys. But, 
Dude, he's he's good for some knockouts, man. Again, he's a big, strong fighter. Uh, he's training at one of the best mixed martial art camps that there is. Yeah, so, top team, right? Yeah, American top team down in Coconut Creek, Florida. And dude, they have champions that are coming through there all the time. So yes, they um, do. That's a, that's the team you want to go to. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. Uh, that's where uh, Corbett Covington trained. That's where Jorge Masvidal trains. So he's at a good camp. But it'll be interesting to see how, how it pans out. Uh, do you have an official prediction for the main event tomorrow night? Uh, Dustin in three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dustin in three by what? Oh, I think it's going to be a knockout again. I think uh, I think once, you know, any fighter, once you start, you know, getting knocked out and stuff, it, it, it's easier to get knocked out again. And, you know, Connor's never been knocked out, but, you know, Dustin laid it on him, and I think that, you know, with with Connor's work ethic, I'm not saying he's a bad fighter or nothing like that, but like everyone says, you got a hundred plus million dollars in the bank. You ain't grinding like that dude that doesn't have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah, man. Um, dude, I'm so torn because it's like I mean, I could easily see a scenario where Connor comes out like a fucking man possessed and gets that quick knockout. I mean, very true, very true. Dustin did say that uh, Connor wobbled him a little bit in the first round, the last fight, because you know Connor does have a left hand from hell, man. Dude, he, he hits fucking hard, dude. Yeah, he, he hits like especially a tank. Especially for a little dude. Especially for like you know what? What are they fighting at? One seventy? Uh, they're fighting at one fifty-five. Uh, okay, so Connor made him come down this time. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's where Dustin. They so the first time they fought it was at one forty-five. Yeah, that's when uh, uh, Dustin was a baby though. Yeah, and he was also cutting like 30 pounds of weight mm-hmm. to make 145. But so was Connor, too. So it's like this is a more natural weight class for both of them. Um, well, it I could know. go either way. It could go either way. I mean, Connor does have that one hitter quitter. I mean, he really does. He clips Dustin behind the ear again. Dustin will go out. We've seen Dustin yeah. go out before. Those Irish guys, they, they live the fight and fight to live. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but once you got 100 million, the, the fight's over. Drinking, fucking, and fighting. And that's what the <laughs> Irish do. Drinking, fucking, and fighting, boys. Um, dude, I, uh, I, I've been, like I said, uh, Conor McGregor, I've been a fan of him for a long time just because, like, you know, I've been a fan of MMA since 2015. So I mm. love that it's fine. I mean, 2005, excuse me. Um, so I, I love that this sport is, like, finally mainstream. And when you have finally. a fighter... Yeah, when you have a fighter like Connor, like everyone talks about the sport when, you know, even like casual fans, like even if you don't watch it, you know who Connor is, you know the event and the spectacle. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's, uh, it's a good times, man. I'm pumped for it. Uh, listen, I'd be remiss if I, if I let you, uh, if I, if we got out of here without you talking some Panther football, bro, did you have anything, uh, you wanted to add to any of our prior conversations before uh, before we jump out of here? Um, I do think Cam's a top 15 still. I'll give you that. There we go. Um, I'm very hopeful for the future, but you know what I mean? That, that's just who I am, man. I'm an optimist when it comes to my team. If you're not all in, then don't be in at all. You know what I mean? That's yep. right. That's yep. right. <laughs> 100%, dude. Shit, there was something I wanted to say. I forget what y'all were talking about. Hmm. Um, Tyler Cunningham, what's up, dude? Yo, what's up, Cody? Chilling, bro. Chilling, bro. We're just talking, uh, talking some Panther football, some UFC, man. We're just bullshitting, bro. Yeah, man. I missed the show last Friday. That was cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Shout out to Kevin Bosch over in the chat. He says my mom's the top 15. Bro, my mom's a number. My mom's a number one, son. Don't fucking get it twisted, bro. Shit. Oh, I remember back. now. Yeah, what's up? Uh, we were talking about uh, the versatile players. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. I said it in the chat or whatever, but like, uh, technically, Jeremy Chen lined up at five positions last year. He played outside okay. linebacker, inside linebacker, free safety, strong safety, and at times he played nickel corner. So when it comes to versatility on a defense, the only thing that we didn't ask him to do was line up on the damn line. You know what I'm saying? 
this dude is for sure definitely a safety. I mean, he's too small to be a full time linebacker. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as you know, they threw they threw the book at him, and you know, I mean, the the kid just took it and ran with it. So you got to respect him for that. Uh, I mean, a little high to be number one, obviously. I mean, but he did play five positions, and he played all five pretty well. It's definitely not a surprise to me if he ends up being the most versatile player in football. I mean, he obviously has the skill set to be able to do it. Um, again, I think we're all pretty much just like, you know, number one on the list, especially when you have, you know, McCaffrey right below him and Kamara and Jamal Adams and Travis Kelsey. Like, you know, it's maybe after one season, it might be a little tough to put him number one. But, dude, the sky is the limit for uh, uh, for Jeremy Chen. And, and you know, I'm I'm really thinking that the Panthers could be um, on the verge of kind of creating our own little legion of boom. Am I right? I mean, if especially if uh, Dante Jackson turns it on, and now we got J.C. Horn and Jeremy Chen. Like, if we could fucking figure out what free safety is, is a little don't forget, man. We, we still got AJ Bowie too. Yep. And but is he a yeah. solid safety though? I mean, I could see a slide him to free safety. He might be able to play that. So, so, mm-hmm. so Cody, let me ask yeah, you what's this. Up? Do you Do you give Marty Herney credit for making that pick? <laughs> do, do I have to? <laughs> I mean, Talk you know my rule, rules, but... Do, you know, do I, mean, I do I... Do I have to give him like I don't know, man? Like that my, my whole conundrum with Marty Herney was is that we never know who was making the the moves. Like uh everybody wanted to say that it was because of Matt Rule that we took the players that we did. But I mean, I, I don't know, especially seeing that Panthers confidential where they were showing uh Fitterer and how uh Matt Rule collabed with them. Yeah, I mean, it's reasonable to me that Matt Rule just defaulted to Marty Herney and let him make the picks, which I don't know, dude. I know you want me to give him credit, dude. I just don't know if I can, dude. You do it. I, it's okay. I, can, I might <laughs> have to, to bro. <laughs> I really might have to. I mean, I don't know. Do you give him credit? Do y'all like what, – what does that even mean? Yeah, yeah I, I give him credit for – Jeremy Chen as much as I do for Cam Newton and Luke Keithley. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Dude. Like, yeah, he drafted all those dudes. We salute to him. It doesn't it doesn't mean he was a good GM. <laughs> yeah, but it was a was, second round was, hit for him. Yeah, round one <laughs> wizard, no for sure. But he those next two picks, he we're still waiting for a uh, gross and toast, but you know, Chen, he killed it with that pick. I was so happy with that pick. I, I will say the first two picks last e- last year definitely kind of panned out, at least in their first year. You know, Derek Brown and Jeremy Chin, both of those guys together, they really stepped up, especially for being rookies, you know. And I, I'm excited to see what the, what happens on the line this year when you have Derek Brown, you have Brian Burns, and whoever else they have on the other side. You know, I'm I'm real excited to see what what's going to happen. I feel like we're going to have a lot more sacks this year than we did last year. Oh, for sure we're going to have a lot more sacks, man. You got yeah. my Camden boy himself, Hassan Reddick, coming in. He's going to put in work, boy. I'm, I'm excited for him too, man. Yeah, nobody's worried about the um, defense. we just worried about that damn offense. Yeah. You thought left tackle's been bad over the last few years. Wait till you see this year, bro. <laughs> bro, don't say that, man. Don't, hey, it, it, let me live under the false pretenses that we have a good left tackle, man. <laughs> Dude, that just don't don't kill my fantasies yet, man. I want to believe that someone on this team can be a legit left tackle, man. Be it um, Christian I'll put it Sand. You, I'll put it to you this way, man. There's going to be a lot of tight end on the left side this year. Yep. <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I think we I drafted understand. Tommy Tremble just to be a blocker on the left side to help Cam Irvin's ass out. So Tommy Tremble's our left tackle. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> That's a mega brain take right there. Uh, hey, Tyree Ross wanted me to comment. Uh, uh, what, what do I think about people taking Georgia over Clemson? 
Uh, I don't know why you would ever bet on a football team from the state of Georgia, bro. Real talk. <laughs> Straight up. I don't care if you're talking about the Falcons. I don't care if you're talking about the Bulldogs. They're going to choke it away at the last second, bro. So it, it really don't matter too much, man. Um, yeah, I think my Tigers are going to roll over those pups. But I'm biased again, but I think Clemson's going to have the best D-line in all college football. But ooh, and I ooh. said this. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, this is something I wanted to bring up to you, Cody, about your Clemson love and all that. You were the one pounding the table about Cleveland Farrell. I mean, he ain't really working out all that much. I mean, was I pounding the table or was I saying he had potential? I think I was saying he had potential. And again, like, dude, you can only judge people based on their college film. To me, I looked at his college film. I thought he was similar to Nick Chubb. I don't know. Nick Chubb had one good season in the NFL so far. I don't know, man. People, yeah, people want to uh, talk about Isaiah Simmons too, man. I saw you in the Discord earlier <laughs> <laughs> talking about Isaiah. I was big on him too, man. Uh, it, it's hard. To, it's hard to judge these one-year players. Farrell has been. It's been some some time now, but uh, you know, again, Isaiah Simmons will probably turn it on this year. Uh, I I don't see why wouldn't they upgraded their defense so much, but. Dude, we could have had Isaiah Simmons and Jeremy Chan, but but you don't need both. We need Derek Brown. Yeah, no, yeah. true that. True, true that. One hundred percent on that. Yeah, that's I'm what okay. I'm saying. I'm, def- I'm definitely okay with passing on Simmons now that I've seen how Derek Brown has at least panned out in his first year. You know, I think Isaiah Simmons is still going to be a great player, but we definitely need a Derek Brown over over Simmons, especially now that we have Chin. Yeah, if we I mean, didn't have Ken, I would have. My feelings would have been true. reversed. Yeah, one hundred percent. The fact that we did get Jeremy Chen, who has turned out to be able to do what everyone thought Isaiah Simmons was going to do in his first year, that's really cool. And I still want to see um, uh, Derek Brown take another step next year. You know, I thought he had a good rookie season. Um, kind of went under the radar a little bit. Uh, didn't have a bunch of big numbers, but. Again, he's a nose tackle. Like, he's not going to have the Aaron Donald number of sacks every year. Like, that's just – that's not going to be his M.O. But uh, uh, if he plays dominant and healthy in the middle of our defense, everything is going to flow around him. I mean, he's going oh, to give Brian Burns and Hassan Reddick the one-on-one matchups uh, that they're looking for. Yeah. If you look yeah, at his games last season – oh, my bad. Go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you look at his games last year, yeah, I mean, you, you look at a D tackle in general, anybody on the D line, O line, it usually takes them one, two seasons to get their groove, but it, it's the progression that you saw every game getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And the kid's got a high motor. I mean, he don't stop. So True. It, it's looking good for him. Uh, to Kevin Boshoven in the chat, I'll happily take your money, bro. <laughs> I don't give a damn, bro. I'll happily take the cash. I'll happily take it. He's not even saying uh, Georgia. He's saying the Gamecocks. Oh, Gamecocks. Like, what? Like, bro, get out of here with that shit. (laughs) Oh, my Lord. But, um. Pharaoh, back to Pharaoh, I think he's just a product of his uh, environment. Uh, mm. Going to the Raiders. I mean, they put a lot on them to be like you know, kind of the kind of the start of that defensive line because they haven't had a good defense since. Oof, I can't go back that far. So, <laughs> I mean, he's he's got some more time, I think. The Raiders are kind of a bullshit team, right? And that everybody kind of. Uh, Says that they're going to be good every year until they're inevitably not, <laughs> you know. Like I think everybody wants John Gruden to work out mm. and uh, and be good, but I don't I don't necessarily think that's working out too well. Yeah. Nah, but they also got uh, was it uh, Mike Mayock as the GM, and uh, I don't know, man. It looked like they were like window shopping and just like picking whatever big names and smiley faces they could get to just get them on the team. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and before we get off here, I mean, I wanted to ask everybody what the game was that they're most excited for this year. 
are we all just defaulting to that uh, matchup when the Patriots come to town, or what, what? What are we thinking? What's What's the game everybody's looking forward to? I'm saying the first game, that game against the Jets. Jets. Yep. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. Being up here in New England, I'm excited for that game, especially if we win. You know, being able to rub it in all my uh, coworkers' faces and everything like that. But that first game, that's really going to define how the season is. You know, so if we go and we ball out, you know, that'll make the rest of the season pretty exciting. You know, especially knowing that we beat the team that Sam came from. If we can, if we can win that game and at least be competitive in the New England game, I'll be okay. I'll be okay with whatever happens this season because I know the floor. The floor is what's gonna what we did last season. Yeah, maybe not maybe not record wise, but aggravation wise, that's kind of <laughs> the floor. You know? So, by the way, I figure out. Uh, let me go ahead and read this to you all while I'm uh, on air. Joe Person tweeted out: uh, "Don't get the sense that there's been a lot of movement in the Panthers talks with Taylor Moten, uh, but deadlines can spur action." In this case, it's July 15th. So if we're going to get a deal done for Taylor Moten, it's going to happen before next Thursday. Oof. Hopefully Tuesday morning. Yeah, right? So we can talk <laughs> about it on the show that night. Um, Maybe they'll wait until 9.05 at night to announce it. <laughs> all right. Do you guys tell me, uh, are, we, are we doing this deal with Taylor or is he playing under the tag? We got it. The way it's looking, yeah. the way it's looking is going to be under the tag. I, I'm sure we have the space to sign them, but it's like if you haven't done it now, why? Why? There's yeah. disagreement somewhere, so it, it's it's right. disconcerting. But we'll see. Yeah, the disagreement is he want left tackle money, but he played on the right side of the line. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, okay, but y'all be like, I, I asked this last Friday too. Would everybody flip out if we did decide to try Taylor at left tackle for a little while? No, 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 absolutely no. not. Go ahead, throw him over there. Let's see what happens. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. what if what if he is the best left tackle on the football team, and Cam Irving or Brady Christensen or whoever can end up being a, a, a good or at least serviceable right tackle? It's like. If that's the scenario that we find ourselves in, let's not handcuff ourselves to doing some dumb shit. Oh, for sure. Let's see. Let's see what he brings to the table. If the dude can actually play left tackle at least halfway decently and better than we've had the last couple of seasons, let's keep him there. But you know what? If he doesn't, then let's put him back in his old position. I think no matter what, we need to we need to sign him. We can't afford not to. Who else do we have on that old line that you could actually trust? Depending on what our record is, it might be the next draft pick. You know what I mean? Greg Little. Trust uh, Greg Little. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Bro, <laughs> let's not let, let's not trust him and say we did. Because, <laughs> dude, like, I, and that's another thing is, like, there are two players that, to me, if they don't play this year, then they're draft bust. And – one more so than the other, but that's Greg Little and Brady Christensen. Because it's like if Greg Little, we spent a second round pick on Greg Little. If he can't play anything for us this year, I'm talking right tackle, left tackle, guard, dude. If he can't play something for us, we need to cut him and move on. I, I better learn like, long snapping. Yeah, right. You better learn to do something. I, I think we should throw another name in there too. Who? What's up? Terrence Marshall. We traded Terrence. back, and we traded back, and we passed on so many solid O linemen mm. to get him. Now, don't get me wrong. In, okay, to do it despite the Saints. I'm all for it, but that yeah. is, he better play because if he doesn't play and he doesn't ball out, that is a big waste of a pick, and that is you know that goes against our management. That's a great point, man. We passed on two or three potentially better left tackles uh, that, you know, had the potential to start right away for us in favor of Terrace Marshall. Um, I said last Tuesday, I wouldn't be surprised 
if at the end of the season, Terrace Marshall could be looking like a potential number one for us moving forward. Again, he's got to prove it, but he has the kind of talent and potential. I think that's why we drafted him, though, because, you know, you look at Robbie Anderson's contract, $11 million for this year. We haven't extended him yet. We still got DJ Moore. He's going into his fourth year. We picked up the fifth-year option. I, you know, as much as I love Robbie, don't don't get it twisted. I mean, I love him to death. But at the same time, if Tyrese Marshall turns it on, that means, you know, we can let Robbie walk and we have a, you know, a number one and two with DJ and, and Terrace, right? Yeah, yeah. And you you have Terrace on a you know rookie four year deal where you're not paying a ton of money, which leaves you you know a le- you know enough money to you know uh, sign DJ, you know because I believe it or not, in my opinion, I think DJ's one of the top ten receivers in the NFL. I mean, you look at what he does. I mean, you look at the garbage passes he had last year. He still was taking them and putting work in. I've said this my like I've said this since we drafted both of them. Uh, DJ Moore is a running back who plays wide receiver, and Christian McCaffrey is a wide receiver who plays running back. All right, yeah, that, I, I like that's not far out of the. Uh, you just look at the way he runs. Yeah, man. Like, like, he doesn't run from contact. True. You know, he puts his head down, puts his shoulder down. He's looking to run people over. Like you know, the the kid rushes hard. Like you know, what I mean, so I think it, I think when we drafted Terrace, it was just a. <laughs> it's just part of the plan because, you know, I don't think they're looking to sign anybody to big deals right now. Cause if you look at all the contracts we've signed, we've, we've renegotiated Christians. We've renegotiated shacks. We're trying to get everything, everybody to where they should be. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think Robbie Anderson, 11 million for one year. It's kind of high. I'm, I'm going to say one thing and then I actually need to hop off. Cause I yeah, just man. got done with dinner, but, uh, I honestly don't – and as much as I love Robbie as a player, I don't think we should should have ever signed him. Could you imagine what last year could have been? And I know it's always could have. But if we had Christian McCaffrey, Mike Davis, Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore. I mean, yeah, we, we don't have a tight end. But if you were to th- replace Robbie Anderson with Mike Davis, I feel like we would have been more productive last year. We would have been able to hold an O-line even a little better than, than we did. And that was already an improvement over the year before. But we had enough weapons. We also had Brandon Zilstra. I mean, we, we were hurt and we didn't have a lot. But we, don't necess- we didn't necessarily need him. And now we lost Curtis Samuel, which personally I, would, I wish that he had stayed. And I would still take Curtis Samuel over Robbie Anderson any day of the week. Don't get me wrong, DJ and Curtis, they're both shorter guys. You know, you want a taller guy, too, on the roster. But I don't think Robbie Anderson was that answer. And I would have loved to have seen, and I know we all would have, more Mike Davis, Christian McCaffrey sets. I mean, it's certainly – I hear the, the the justification of it. I mean, especially seeing as how, I mean, Teddy Bridgewater couldn't really utilize the deep threat that was Robbie Anderson – um, again, I feel like we're not really going to truly see the effect of Robbie Anderson until this year, you know, especially if Sam Darnold is able to continue uh, that connection that they had in New York. Um, you know, it, he might pay off dividends this year. I will say that he's probably only with us for another year. Uh, you know, Kevin Bossov mentioned Shy Smith uh, that we drafted also. I definitely don't see us continuing to pay him after this year, after drafting Terrace Marshall and Shy Smith. It just seems redundant. And if you're going to end up paying DJ, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, something's got to give at that point. Something's got to yeah. give. Either DJ's got to go or Robbie. And I'd rather send Robbie packing over DJ. DJ's, gonna, DJ's a younger player. You know, DJ has more of a future ahead of him. And on top of that, DJ's been here longer. You know, do you really want to get rid of your two top wide receiver picks in back-to-back years? Do you really want to let them walk and not get anything for it? At that point, it's kind of a waste, especially because we didn't take take either one anywhere in their career. You know, we gave them the stats, but they didn't have a real quarterback that was thrown to them. You know, not for the not for the last two years, anyways. Yeah, I. 
I maintain that Curtis Samuel, we never got to see what kind of uh, talent he could actually be for us. Just because the same thing is true for DJ Moore. was the same thing for him. Like he always had a bunch of bombs throwing him the, the football. It was either hurt Cam Newton. It was either Kyle Allen or Teddy Bridgewater failing to hit him and stride down the field. So, Bro, don't you know. Taylor Heineke. Oh, yeah, bro. How can I forget Taylor, man? The Washington. <laughs> you mean the dude the... that went to the XFL and never saw a snap? He had two guys in front of him. <laughs> hey, bro, how that's... bad is it? How bad is it that he beat out Kyle Allen and whoever the other uh, backup was that year? He I won. <laughs> that's insane, dude. How about Will Greer has never beaten out anyone? Oh, that's totally a bust right there, man. Embarrassing, dude. Like, especially if PJ Walker ends up winning the backup job, and he will. PJ should. God, Sorry. that's PJ fan club right here, dude. Dude, I'm not. I'm not mad at it, dude. I, I'm not mad at that, man. I would have, and like I've told you guys numerous times, I would have rather rolled with PJ last year than Teddy. Especially oh, for sure. You was, you was banging the table. You were the you were the whole PJ fan club. You was trying to get everybody to jump on, bro. Dude, it's just, I'm, you know, we got sick and tired of Ron because he only played the veteran players. You know, Teddy yeah. is that veteran player. Don't get me wrong, PJ has been around, but he never really had that starting role in the NFL. You know, so he didn't have that credential. Yeah, what and he was also was stuck it? behind Andrew Luck. Yep. But what's weird is he went to Temple. So you would have thought that he would have taken the field over Teddy Bridgewater. But something tells me that the whole reason why we sat Christian McCaffrey and P.J. Walker didn't start in any game other than the one where he had to, I think they're, both reasons are the same. Let's, let's lose out the rest of the season and get a better draft pick in the long run. The only time I, that we I, messed up was against Washington. I truly believe that Christian McCaffrey had a couple boo-boos, and they were like, uh-uh, you're going to sit your ass down this whole season we already see how bad it is. And the only reason why they started Teddy is because he was paying him fucking 20-something million dollars or whatever. Oh, yeah, that definitely played a role, too. The money the money always plays a role. You can't but do you remember, kind of money but do you remember last play. year during that Detroit game when uh, you know we, that was, we pitched a shutout? It was 20-0. to zero. Yep. And, and, and it's like I feel like the aggressive nature of P.J., it made our defense play better. Oh God! Yeah. Like it, 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 like they fed off of one another, and the, that energy made our defense go crazy. And, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that something similar happens this year when we play the Jets, where it's just like, okay, we're we're taking shots, and our defense knows we're taking shots, so they're aggressive. Like that's what I'm wanting to see. That's what I'm hoping to I, see from our defense. I hope so as well, because I'm going to judge Sam Darnold hard as hell in this first game. You, you, your first game as, a, as on your new team, you're playing your old team. If you don't come out with a chip on your shoulder, and if you ain't trying to win it all and go as hard as you can, I want to see him drag defenders as he runs. You know what I mean? Like You better, yeah. you better show us why we brought you here. Oh, yeah. 100%, man. I'm, dude, I, I've said this before. Everyone has a ton of proving on this team. Everyone has a ton of proving, man. Uh, from our superstars to our superstars in the making, like Christian McCaffrey has to prove he can stay healthy. Brian Burns has to prove he's an all-star pass rusher. You know, uh, J.C. Horn has to prove he's worth being the number one corner taken. Like, there's so much to prove for this team. And then you have Sam Darnold, and again, playing the team that kicked you out of town week one. Yeah, I agree with 10. Like, that's the ultimate motivator. If that doesn't do it for you, dude, I don't know what's going to. So, if he don't if he don't even at least try hard. I mean, take the shots, man. If, if you're not showing me that you, yeah. you you're you're a winner and that you want to win and that you're you're willing to put it all on, then you don't belong here, bro. Then don't go. <laughs> true facts, man. True facts. I, but I gentlemen, see what you can do with the deep ball. Yeah, it's man. Been far too long since we've had the deep ball. Between him and uh, Ro- between DJ and Robbie and Terrace and Shy, I'm wanting to see some deep balls this year, man. That's yeah, I want some excitement back to our offense, to our passing attack, like For a sure. downfield passing attack. I feel like that's something we haven't had in ages now. 
I but, do have a question. I posted yeah, it in the Discord uh, the other day. Is it just me, or does Brian Burns look like he got a little bit bigger? Oh, yeah. He did, yeah, I yeah. think so. I think so. I hope so. Um, yeah, man. Like uh, I, I know his his thing has been trying to put on put on some pounds, put on some muscle to start, you know, setting that physical edge. I'm, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Uh, he, he had like, uh, what was it, the number one QB pressures in the league last year. I mean, he's getting there, but he's just not. He's just not finishing it yet. So, I mean, uh, hopefully he puts on a little bit more weight, puts on a little bit more power, and, and you know, I've been banging the table, man. I, I want him to break the sack record this year. I'm all in on Spider-Man Burns, you know what I mean? Ooh, well, I think, I think the issue last year was the fact that who did he have on the other side? He had F.A. Obata, who he had, a, he had a year for himself, but he didn't have anybody on the other side. So everybody knew, stay away from Brian. Stay away mm. from Burns. You'll be better off. Now that he, now that we have Hassan Reddick on the other side, there's going to be nowhere to go but straight up the gut. And then you got to deal with Derek Brown. So at that at that point, you're kind of picking your poison. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather take on Brian Burns or Hassan Reddick than Derek Brown. Yeah, that's a big boy, dude. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if we we're a blitzing team this year. Oh, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. Dude, especially like, since we have speed on the edge, we have power in the middle. Uh, you know, dude, send uh, uh, either Dante Jackson or Jeremy Chin through those uh, B and C gaps. Blow up Matt Ryan. Dude, I am here for it, bro. Hell yeah. Also, also, did you, uh, I have a little sweetheart training camp love up since last year. Did we have any word on Omar Bayless at all? It's a name I hear a lot, but I don't. I, I don't. Uh, how about this? What position does he play? I don't wide even re- know what position he plays. <laughs> he's a wide receiver. He's one of. The, he, he's a bigger jump ball guy. You know what I mean? Like he got great hands, but he got hurt last year. But we kept him around. Like you know, for an undrafted rookie to be kept around. Hopefully, he's got some talent. I hope so, man. I mean, I don't know how many receivers we're going to end up keeping on the roster. I'm think I'm thinking DJ, Robbie, Terrence Marshall, and then Shy Who's Smith. Who's returning? Who's pump returning? Okay, Zelstra. Think- Zelstra. Over Shy Smith. Over Shy? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't seen Shy play. So. Are, are you Team Zelstra too? It's like PJ and Zilstra, Those are your people you bang the table for? No, I, I don't bang my. T- I don't bang the table for Zilstra. But <laughs> okay. You know, PJ will bang the table for it. He at least deserves to be our backup. And I feel like he should have just gotten more of a shot last season. But that's last season, not this season. Mm. This season, I want to see how Sam does. If Sam comes out and he at least has a 3-3 three and three record, all right, let's 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 keep him in for a little while longer, see how he does. But if Because th- it's the second half of the season where we're really going to be tested. That's where all the difficulty is. So yeah. if Sam is struggling in the beginning – He's definitely going to struggle in the end, but at the same time, there's that learning curve. So by game six, which is usually what you say, Cody, you know what kind of team you have at that point. I feel like that's really what, when we're going to know who Sam Darnold is. Is he going to be the guy that we can trust to go forward in the future? Or do we need to see what we have in PJ so that way we know whether or not to keep him and, what, and to what capacity? Because PJ could be a valuable backup. Dude, yeah, I love his arm talent. I I, I love oh, yeah. his 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 uh ability to throw the ball downfield. He's aggressive, dude. He doesn't care, man. He'll he'll, he'll shut the football. I kind of think got balls. I kind of think uh, uh DJ Robbie Terrace, Shy Smith, and then I think we'll probably have another maybe another bubble player. Another, but well, we'll probably have what six or seven receivers on the on the final roster. So. Maybe there's another spot for Bayless and Zilstra. I don't know. I, I mean, we need to see something from them, though. Like, you know, it, it's, it's time for people to, to step up and be contributors. Like, I'm tired of – I feel like we're never one of those teams that has, like, undrafted free agents that come out of nowhere for us and just start, you know, playing badass, you know, like not since Andrew Norwell, I don't think. So – yeah, I would love to be surprised by someone. Omar Bayless, Zilstra, 
Shit. Kurt, Kurt, that could have been Curtis if we actually had a QB to throw to him. Yeah. You know, look Ooh. at it, Cody, if you look at that, or uh, I think there was some list that I saw on Instagram somewhere, but like the top top 10 players that will have the biggest effect on their new teams. Curtis Samuel was like number five or number six for Washington. And that I believe 100%. I mean, it, it all really depends if Heineke can turn it on the way that he did, did at the end of last season. If he comes out and he turns it on, you know, I know oh, that's Ryan not, Fitzpatrick's job. Man. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> he's a bad vet too. He's like 14, 15 years in the league. There's zero chance Brown Rivera takes him out the game. He's going to have to get hurt. Yeah. Oh, Fitz magic. Oh, I didn't right, even guys. think about that. We already know how much Ron Rivera loves his old veterans. So that yeah, Fitz Magic, that ought to be right up his alley, man. Right, I do man. have a question. I'm gonna hop Supreme. Off. All right, I appreciate you All coming right, on here, Nick. Man, I appreciate you uh showing love, man. We'll do it again next Friday, dude. Definitely. And I'll see you guys Tuesday too, all right? Yep. Peace and love. Keep man. pounding. Keep pounding, guys. Keep pounding. So my yeah, question, real quick, you had yeah, uh, posed the question to us about what game we're most excited about. I'd like to hear what Supreme got to say about it. Yeah, Supreme, what you looking forward to, man? So, you know, I don't think he's going to – no, let me rephrase that. I'm pretty sure he's going to make it to week nine because um, I'm going to that game. But if I had to choose another game, um, I would have to say uh, those two Bucks games. I think we play them twice in three weeks. So it's going to mm-hmm. be like a, a real measure of, you know, to see where our team is at as far as the division goes, because you got to win your division if you want a real shot at the playoffs. So I think those, one, one of those two games, uh, that's what I'm waiting to see. Okay. I, that's a, like, there's no bad answers with this, man. I know the one that I'm pumped for. Uh, just be, just because, like, I'm hoping at least, like, I'm either gonna be pumped for it or super depressed by the time <laughs> we get to it. But uh, it's week 15. Uh, I guess the I guess the Buffalo Bills, man, because it's like, especially if we're a good team, at, at that point in our season, we're gonna be on the road, uh, in December, in Oof. Buffalo. So you know there's probably going to be some sideways snow and shit, man. It's like if we come away from Buffalo with with the victory, dude, that could be a season-defining win for us if we're able to come away from that one. Uh, and they're a good football team. That's a, Everybody makes the jokes. That's Panthers North. Keep rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> keep you know? rumbling. Yeah, keep rumbling. Uh, yeah, Sean McDermott's up there. I mean, they got a lot of – a lot of players, um, and Josh Allen, dude. Josh Allen looks like a world beater. So, uh, if if we're able to go and get a good win on the road late in the season uh, against Buffalo, dude, that's I'm pumped for that if that can happen. Yeah, I see. A I feel you. Like uh, last year, um, how we all were going into the Packers game thinking, you know, oh, we're going to get waxed. And yeah. that first half, we were getting waxed, but they slowly crept back a little bit. So, I, we got a chance. We got a chance. I can I mean, tell I you what, man. I'm I'm looking forward to the Philly game because, you know what I mean, I live in Eagles territory, and they like to talk a lot <laughs> of shit. Yeah, October the 10th, man, at home too, man. Dude, us Panther fans need to start showing out at the stadium, dude. Because especially whenever the Eagles fans come through, dude, they get ridiculous in our stadium. And I will tell you this, man. Like, they're my home team. I mean, I, I do root for the Eagles as long as it doesn't affect Carolina in any way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? But their chant is so goddamn catchy, bro. I swear to God. Like, even – I swear to – last time we played in, in Philly – well, last time Philly played in, in Carolina – like, they travel well. Everybody knows that uh, Philadelphia is one of the most traveling teams. But when that chant starts going, I, I swear, I even saw Panther fans jumping in and doing the ah. E-A-G-L-E-S, bro. I, it's so catchy. It is so hard not to do it. Dude, if you're a Panthers fan who's ever sang the Eagles song, especially in Bank of America Stadium, dude, kill yourself. <laughs> said, dude, just end it now. It doesn't get better. It just does end not. it now. 
shout out my guy Carl Van man for the five uh four ninety nine man. I appreciate you, bro. And hey man, Carl, all the shit you talking, man. One of these Fridays, you gotta come in here and talk some shit with me, bro. Cause uh, you know, that's the whole point of this show, this Friday show. But uh Friday but, free for all, man. Friday free for all, man. That's it. It's free for all, man. Whatever y'all want to talk about. We can talk about aliens, UFC, fucking whatever, man. I'm down for it. Uh, this show is for the fans. But, boys, I appreciate you jumping in and hanging out with me, uh, you know, talking some uh, talking some football with me on a, on, on a Friday night. Uh, is there anything you guys want to plug or let people know before, uh, before I jump out of here? Um, let's see. Um, you can usually find me on my what I tag below in some form or iteration. Um, you know, I'm on Facebook by my real name, um, Instagram, Twitter. I just started a TikTok. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. I don't really care about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just here to talk Panthers with y'all, man. Again, I appreciate you, Mike. Appreciate you coming on and uh, talking with me, man. Ten, a legend of the chat room, bro. You're a C3 legend, bro. What you want to tell these people, man? Oh, but anyway, he might not even be there. He already peaced out. Oh, dang. Ten, you, ten, you there? Ah, he might already be gone. It's the end of the show anyway. It gets off the rails at the end of the show. Uh, but yeah, Mike, I appreciate you coming out, uh, yeah, to everybody that was in the chat room listening. I appreciate you. Uh, we'll do it again next Friday. And, uh, as always, we will be here, uh, 9 PM sharp, uh, with Tony and CK this Tuesday talking all things Panther football. So keep pounding Panther nation. Keep pounding.